Gonna be adding some chompers to sexy T-Rex here. Uh, we got some lower teeth here, 3D printed self-adhesive 3M tape there. Got some upper teeth here as well. And to finish it off, some little bitty teeny tiny front teeth to cover that massive gap. So this should make T-Rex look a little more ferocious and less geriatric. So first things first, I'm gonna turn on the machine, let the T-Rex do its diagnostics. And when it goes down, I'm gonna turn the machine off. That way it freezes in that down position and I can take the backside off of T-Rex. So now that we've got the backside of T-Rex removed, go ahead and power the machine back on so the T-Rex mechanism comes back up and then we can turn it back off so we can get it in a position where we need it to start applying the teeth. Everything's really straightforward. Just gonna peel the tape, put the teeth, line them up inside the jawline for the bottoms there. So it'll look nice like that. Same thing here with the top part. You're gonna take the adhesive off line up the teeth as so make sure they're nice and snug where they need to be all right got the play field popped up and just got done rebuilding the front left and right flippers got brand new coils on there coil stops coil sleeves and the stroke switches the whole nine yards Brand new from top to bottom. The only thing I really repurposed was the original brackets because it's a solid metal bracket. Didn't really need anything, just washed it up real nice. Now everything's working. Initially, I was having issues with the left flipper machine gunning. So when you would hold the flipper down, instead of it just holding the flipper up, it would go brrrr, which is not good. Obviously, that'll burn up your coil. But diagnosed it, figured out that there was a broken wire on the coil itself. So unspooled it a little bit, resoldered the connection. Bada bing, everything functions nice and neat now. So I hit the left flipper, get a nice snap and pop to it. Hit the right flipper, nice snap and pop to it. So no more weak flippers. And on top, everything has been stripped, cleaned, waxed. Play field's nice and silky smooth, shiny, very clean. I uh, went over this thing with a fine tooth comb, put lots and lots of love and care on all of the nooks and crannies and making sure everything's nice and clean. You know, it's a pain in the butt to tear everything off the play field and it's, you know, an arduous process to put everything back on the play field, but it's worth it in the end to make sure everything's nice and clean and everything. So got that all squared away, got the new plastics on. So these are the original plastics that were here on the slings, the optional orange ones that it came with. Just wasn't for me. Got all the LEDs in here installed. Everything's good. I'm still changing my mind whether I want yellow or bright white here in these chaos letters. So. That's still debatable. Got the flippers replaced. As you'll remember, I had those goofy looking Williams ones on there. Nice, dirty, grimy, couldn't clean them up. Didn't want to clean them up, honestly. So got the original yellow Data East ones, put some yellow rubbers on there. Put white rubbers, all brand new, clear, bright white, star post. Like I said, everything's been cleaned. Everything's been brightened, shined up. Uh, polished all my metal rails and everything, so that looks good. Everything is nice, bright, and shiny. Back box, same way. So now for some cosmetic upgrades, I'm gonna put some nice decals on all my targets. So we got spitter decals over there. I'll show you what these look like. So this is gonna cover each and every one of the targets. So you got you know, targets over here, target bank over here, one back there. So you got corresponding dinosaur for each one of the targets. So that'll be a nice little upgrade. And then back here, the captive ball, normally it's just a standard basic pinball, but I'm going to be replacing it with this marble white pinball that looks like an egg. So we have that egg shot that actually looks like an egg. Also got some flexible red LEDs I'm going to be putting here in the tray. So you notice we got four. I've taken one out just for, you know, being able to show you here. But we got four light up LEDs that would normally light up your T-Rex here in the tray. I'm actually going to be replacing those. Got some nice new decals that are come here. Instead of the bulbs sticking out and protruding like they're designed, I'm gonna put these flexible red LEDs and tweak them to where they're not sticking out, to where they're just under there. So that way it doesn't stick out and it still lights up the T-Rex for these new decals I'm gonna be using. These are the stock decals. These are, you know, a little more modern, if you will. I'm, I'm okay with that. I actually prefer this kind of aesthetic more than these 
variegated blue ones. Plus, I got another decal to go here on the front of the coin door where there's nothing here. A nice little sunset Jurassic Park decal to go there as well. Also replaced my pop bumper caps. So the original ones were just yellow. They had the Jurassic Park logo on them, but it wasn't colored in or anything like that. So I replaced them with these. Uh, it's got the logo colored in black. Sticks out a little more, pops. No pun intended, obviously, but I think it just looks a little bit cleaner. It looks a little bit nicer than just the old school yellow without any kind of coloring of the Jurassic Park logo. All right, got the subway pulled out, and as you can see, it's absolutely filthy. Hasn't been cleaned in God knows how long, so I'm going to give it a nice good scrubbing, make sure everything's nice and polished uh, on the underside because this has such an integral part of the gameplay. All the balls are going to be constantly going through it. doesn't make sense to leave this all grimy and grody with everything else being nice and clean. I noticed that my little Vuck up here has got the heads all worn out, so when it pushes the ball up through and kicks the ball back into the play field, it struggles sometimes, maybe one out of every 10 times it doesn't make it all the way up, and that's simply because this is all worn and isn't sticking out and protruding as much as it should. It should have some grommets and little spikes that stick out about yay tall. So I don't need to replace the, the coil or anything like that. Everything is good. It just, this needs replaced. So when it kicks out, it's got a little more oomph. All right, next on the agenda, we're gonna do something about this lockdown bar. It's old, tired, worn, scratched up, and the underside of it had some nice padding under it, but obviously it has eroded, deteriorated over the years. And as you can see right up there, it's got some nice rust to it. So I'm going to strip this down, clean it up real nice, uh, probably give it a new coat, new color, new paint job. And I'm going to do the same thing with the legs. The legs are old, tired, worn. They need refurbished as well. And while I'm at it, I'll probably do something about that with the side rails. And then while I'm here, I'm going to do something about this lockdown bar mechanism here underneath the lockdown bar. It looks, as you can tell, pretty grimy pretty weathered and gonna do something to clean this up and make it look just as good as the rest of the cabinet and while i'm at it i'm gonna ahead and remove this old side art blades uh like i said they're chewed up not the best looking need to replace them anyway but i can't get these side rails out without getting into these brackets and those brackets are covered up by the graphics themselves so it's got to go regardless Pro tip for those out there that have never tried to remove side rails, obviously you gotta take the buttons out and there are bolts at the top and back of the side rail, but to actually get it to come up, you'll need to get a scraper, a hot air gun or a hair dryer will do if you're you know, feeling a little uh, janky like me, but all you're essentially gonna do is warm up your scraper and shove it up there straight up and down, nice and easy and work your way all the way to the back and then it'll pop off because there's a double-sided adhesive that this was put on with, with the factory that prevents you from just removing those bolts in the button and then just yanking this thing up. So I'll be scraping that glue off from the underside after I heat up the scraper and be able to remove the side rails. Now, as you can see, the leftover double-sided adhesive that I'm gonna have to clean up off of the side of the cabinet there, but just make careful you're not going to scrape up your cabinet. You don't want to mess up your artwork. Probably going to touch up my artwork later, so I really wasn't worried about it. But regardless, got to clean up this garbage. All right, we got the side rails off. Pop the hinges off while I was at it for the back box. Go ahead and sand these babies down. So they're all pretty straight. No issues, no dents, no dings or anything like that. No holes, so nothing to fill. Just basically sand them down, prime them up, and get them ready for paint. All right, I got the lockdown bar mechanism all coated in bright red, and I found this decal on Pinball Life where I'm going to put here across the top. It's going to cover up the most, you know, the majority of everything up here, but, you know, it's going to have our install the six balls, your caution two-way level, all the normal stickers that would have been on that mechanism. Now it's going to be one large clean decal, and everything's just going to look nice and neat on top here. And before I take the legs off and get working on scraping them up and getting them all painted and everything, I'm gonna make sure when I put them back on, I'm gonna be using these pin guard cabinet protectors, uh, just basic plastic body shell that goes in between the leg and the body itself. That way when you're nudging and moving the machine around, you're not gonna ding up and scratch up and carve into the wood of the body of your machine. So these are absolutely dirt cheap. I highly recommend them. Uh, any pinball machine you get, especially if you're worried about longevity, just pick these up. Worth it, no brainer, cheap, easy, nice add-on. 
And would you look at that, the legs turned out great. Still haven't decided if I want to replace the bolts with something, you know, bright shiny chrome or something like that. But overall, legs look great. These new sliders down here so I don't scratch up my floor. All new legs because the old ones were just absolutely atrocious, rusted and crusted. So replaced those. And here is the lockdown bar mechanism. That's how it turned out after I got the decal and it painted. And of course, I had to do the matching paint job on the side rails as well as the cabinet hinge there. I've got some mock-up tape here just to see if I want to paint the trim around the back box. So that's, you know, aesthetically what it would look like. This is just mock-up trim though. So I haven't made up my mind if I want to paint that. There is no T-molding on this, so I can't put T-molding or anything like that. So I'd have to paint the trim here. Or, you know, I could just leave it black like it always is. So threw some tape on there to help me kind of make up my mind. Let me know in the comments what you think. Should I paint it? Should I leave it black? Let me know. Ladies and gentlemen, we have color. Bright, colorful, beautiful color DMD. Absolutely must have for any old machine in my opinion, but I mean, this breathes absolute new life into the machine. Looks gorgeous, great animations, great color. Need to clean up this protective cover right here, but other than that, everything looks fantastic. Next up is to touch up the inside of the start button here. Not so much the actual button, but as you can see, the, the inner well here is all worn from years and years of abuse. It used to be all solid black inside here, but it's lost all its paint from, you know, grimy fingers smashing that for 30 almost years. So I'm gonna pull this out, put a new LED in it, and clean this up, get it some nice black paint inside so it looks a little, looks a little better. And voila, looks a little bit better. Also took it upon myself to go ahead and make some new apron cards. So this is the stock one I had on here, just old school, this is how you play the game. Pretty boring, same thing over here, free play. So got this, it's option number one to replace that. Option number two, still trying to decide what I wanna go with. Pretty dead set on using this as my rule card over here. Another option, just a plain Jane Jurassic Park logo. And then currently what I'm leaning towards, good old Dennis Nedry as my free play. So this is this is what I gotta make the decision about, but I think I'm leaning most towards free play on this side, and then my rule card that I made over here on that side. 